Hi, I'm your host, Vasco Duarte. Welcome to the Scrum Master Toolbox podcast, where we share tips and tricks from Scrum Masters around the world. Every day, we bring you inspiring answers to important questions that all Scrum Masters face day after day. Hello, everybody. Welcome to our Team Tuesday. This week, we have with us Kulsom Perves. Hey, Kulsom. Welcome back. Hey, Vasco. Thank you. So today's Tuesday, we'll talk about teams in a minute. But for now, first tell us, what was the book that most inspired you in your career as a Scrum Master? Oh, gosh, Vasco, this is probably the toughest question <laughs> because I love reading. And uh, again, uh, as, as a Scrum Master who just jumped into this world without any mentor or coach, uh, the books were probably my virtual mentor. So I learned a lot from different well-known books like Scrum Mastery, Coaching Agile Teams, Radical Candor, Five Dysfunctions of Team. But uh, one book that I always recommend to people now is Crucial Conversations, because we Scrum Masters as change agents, we need to have not only the courage, but also the skill to have difficult conversations. And I really like the way this book preps you for that, you know, along with giving you real life scenarios. Is there a specific tool or an approach that you remember from the book that you would like to highlight? Uh, I think um, the entire framework, like start with heart and then learn to look like the content and conditions, uh, you know, something like that. I, I, I think I uh, described yesterday also when I was having those conversations with teams. Uh, then again, make it safe. Very important thing. Uh, and Scrum Master psychological safety is our uh, prime, uh, uh, you know, aim. So yeah, I, I would say these are the few things. Uh, again, pretty well known, but good reminders. And I have, in fact, noted it down on my uh, and on a sticky note on my whiteboard in my home office. I always <laughs> look at it. Good reminder. Absolutely. And it also is a reminder that conversations have a certain framework. They are not just random yes. collections of phrases and interactions. They actually have a, a structure that we can follow in order to help us, first of all, achieve the goals that we want to achieve, but also mm -hmm. do that together with someone else, because that's what a conversation is, is with yes. someone else, could be one or multiple people, or even a, a right. whole corporation, right? So I, I really like that what you mentioned what you mentioned the specific aspects of that framework but i i really like mm. also the fact mm. that they look at conversation as a framework it's not just a random collection yeah. of phrases it, it really has for me right. the way i usually describe it is that you need to have a start you need to have a middle and you need to have an end and in yeah. the start you need to create safety understand that mm. the person is willing to contribute and so on and so forth then in the middle yeah. you develop the topics that you want to discuss. And then in the end, you need to have some kind of closure, right? Like closure, there needs to yeah. be a feeling that we got to some point together, yes, whatever that yes. point is. So, you know, uh, summarize what you understood, get validation, mm. talk about right. next steps, like all of that stuff. And I think it's very important yeah. to have uh, um, a, a model, a framework, like the Crucial mm. Conversations framework in mind when yeah. we're having these conversations. Right, because sometimes conversations, they just lead to nowhere, right? And that's where I think when you said the, the final part, it must come to an end with some result or some outcome. So yeah, very important. Even if the outcome is to have another conversation, that's a valid one too. Exactly, yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> So yes. that was the book, and we'll put the link mm -hmm. on the show notes for sure for people to go and check it out. It's a great book and very important for uh, us that work with conversations. That's one of our key mm -hmm. tools as Scrum Masters, of course. Um, yeah. But uh, today's Team Tuesday, so we'll talk about teams as well. So tell us the story of a team that you were involved mm -hmm. with, Kulsom, and also mm -hmm. walk us through a little bit of the context so that we uh, understand uh, is a small team, big team, working alone, mm -hmm. working in a scaled framework, whatever that might be. And then mm -hmm. walk us through the steps in which those small little behaviors and, and uh, uh, I don't know, attitudes that started mm -hmm. really small, perhaps, eventually developed mm -hmm. over time and created problems for the team. Yeah. So um, there was a team 
uh, ones which, uh, despite having very experienced individuals, that could not ultimately succeed as a team. So what happened is uh, this this team had uh, a lot of experienced people, uh, but uh, when I went into this, uh, I joined as a scrum master, and I heard stories about this team. The, the scrum master who was actually leaving uh, this team told me a few things. And But then by that time, I understood that I, when I join a new team, I have to go without any biases or anything. So I really did not keep that in mind. But So I went in and I started noticing that um, uh, this team had a couple of uh, dysfunctions. And the biggest thing is that people were not uh, willing to take uh, accountability and ownership. Uh, well, what do you mean you know, by that? Can you give an example of that? Yeah. So, like, there were apparent problems. Uh, the stories uh, in a sprint they did not use to get finished. There was a lot of uh, uh, turnover of uh, uh, sprint items, uh, like carryover from sprint to sprint. And uh, retros, uh, they were basically, they were interested in retros. Even if they used to come to retros, there was a lot of finger pointing, blame game. I mean, it was very, very toxic. And uh, between dev and QA, they were working in that model. They still had devs and QAs. And, uh, you know, there was always some kind of uh, uh, blame game going between those two uh, people as well. Um, so, so overall, it was not a healthy environment. And uh, so I went in and I uh, started with retros again. I wanted to make them understand that what is the prime directive of a retro. Uh, we want to do it in a psychologically safe way. We want everyone to speak up because only few people uh, were used to speak up and they literally used to dominate the conversations. Uh, so uh, I tried all that. And uh, some people, some team members, only one or two who were actually, uh, who liked the agile way of working and being, being self-organized, they supported me. So I got at least few allies in that situation. And uh, yeah, so we we did see the change at that point, but it was a very slow change, Vasco. And uh, I think it took a lot of my mental energy. And I, I still remember, like I used to shudder sometimes before going into retros for that team because it was so toxic. Uh, so over the time, of course, then I realized that there are only few things which are which I can influence. And if people are not willing to uh, change or you know accept uh maybe maybe uh, they are not made for uh this scrum uh, way of working or something and then later i had to leave the uh, company because of another opportunity and uh, i got to know that many of those people actually left the team as well one of the things that is really difficult for us as scrum masters is to decide when to quit Yes. Because not everybody, not all teams, not all organizations are ready for what we can mm -hmm. help them achieve. Yes, and uh, absolutely. for me, from this story, I think the perhaps the biggest doubt is like, when did you decide that it was too much? Like, what were the things that told you that, okay, this is, it's okay. Mm -hmm. I didn't fail, even though I didn't succeed either, but it isn't yeah. just up to me because it's, you know, it's a software development is a team sport. One person yeah. cannot carry the whole team, even if that person is the scrum master. So yeah. what, what led you to, to acknowledge and accept that, okay, this is it. I've given it my best, but now it's time to move on. It was, I think, very late, Pasco. And again, a very good learning opportunity for me because now I know uh, that what I can control, what I cannot control, what I can change, what I cannot change. Um, so um, it was probably um, when I realized that my mental health is getting affected because because of all the toxicity that was going on. And then, um, and also because I realized that I can probably direct my energy into better things because I had been very successful earlier, you know, team uh, which had, that open-mindedness with me, we were able to create good results. And so I, I think that's where I took this fall. And that's also an important realization. Like when you have the experience that you can make it work together with other teams, but in this mm -hmm. team, it just isn't going anywhere, right? And, and yeah. when you said that your mental health started to be affected, I'm reminded that 
a big danger for us when we get caught in this infinite loop of trying to help people and yeah. teams that don't want to be helped. One of the dangers is burnout, right? Like we also need to be yes. mindful that it has an impact on us. It's not just what they are doing, like the blame game and whatever. It's also how we receive it and how it makes us feel. Yeah, very important. And that's why now I advocate so much for self-care for uh, Scrum Masters and Agile coaches. Because I think sometimes we have two good intentions and we, we don't realize all these red flags. Absolutely. We need to be attentive to those red flags, as, yes. as you just said. A, a great yeah. story and, uh, of course, uh, uh, filled with sometimes not so happy realizations, but important realizations for our own good. So yeah. thank you for sharing that story, Kulsom. Thank you, Vasco. My pleasure. Tuesday is Team Day here on the Scrum Master Toolbox podcast. But tomorrow we talk about something that goes beyond the work we do with the teams. We will talk about how to lead change and what our guests have learned from leading and participating in change programs during their career. See you tomorrow. We really hope you liked our show. And if you did, why not rate this podcast on Stitcher or iTunes? Share this podcast and let other Scrum Masters know about this valuable resource for their work. Remember that sharing is caring.